All right, so welcome everyone to this online workshop. And today we'll be talking about how to translate content for learn.wordpress.org. Um, and we have three people on the call here. Um, how many people have used learn.wordpress.org before? Um, you can give me a thumbs up or maybe type in the Zoom chat. Have you ever used learn.wordpress.org before? JC, yes. No. No? Martin, no? No. Um, I mean, that's totally fine. And Louisa, you only saw the website. All right, so I'm gonna start by just giving a, a brief old, um, introduction of learn.wordpress.org, um, and then we'll dive into translation after that. So um, learn.wordpress.org, I'll drop the link in the Zoom chat as well. This is uh, the WordPress project's official um, site for learning about WordPress. Um, so the WordPress also has a lot of documentation, um, which is where you can read about features and read about different things. Um, but on Learn WordPress, we uh, provide different learning resources um, that go beyond documentation. Um, so we have four types of content on learn.wordpress.org. And I'm just going to call it Learn WordPress. So we have four types of content on Learn WordPress. The first one are tutorials. Tutorials are short videos, about five minutes to 10 minutes, um, that talk about specific topics. So um, I will briefly show. So we have tutorials here. You can filter tutorial videos by series, topic, language, etc. cetera. Um, but you'll see here this tutorial is six minutes and it's about using page templates. Or if you scroll down, you'll see more. Uh, for example, a 12 minute tutorial, how to switch from a classic theme to a block theme. Um, this one is more for developers, five minutes, managing a WordPress multi-site network. Um, here's a nine minute workshop, building a page with only patterns. So um, that just gives you an idea of what tutorials are, short videos, um, that help people um, learn a specific concept. And if you open tutorials, um, you'll see there's a video at the top. And then we also have some more information listed underneath it. So here's an overview of what you'll learn in this video, um, some learning outcomes, comprehension questions. Um, this is like just to make sure you've understood the details of the video. Um, and then the transcript. So there's a transcript here of everything that is mentioned inside the video. And then we have a bit of a information about the presenter there. All right, so that is um, the tutorial. And um, you'll see here, we'll ha we have the four content types. So the first one is tutorials. Next one is online workshops. And online workshops is what you are attending right now. So these are live interactive sessions. They're usually an hour. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're longer. And um, if you click on online workshops, you'll see we have a calendar here of um, all the sessions we're hosting. So today, let's see, how to translate content for learn.wordpress.org. There was actually a session earlier today about custom CSS in the site editing era. Um, and then we have more sessions next week. You'll see there's a Japanese online workshop here as well. And our goal is to have just if um, online workshops hosted all the time uh, so that people can log in and learn something new about WordPress whenever they want. Um, so um, again, I think these times are shown in your local time zone. So that says how to translate content for learn.wordpress.org starts at 5 p.m. That's for me in Japan. If you open this page um, in your own browser, you'll see these times in your own local time zone. All right, so tutorials, online workshops. Next, we have courses. So courses um, are just online courses. Um, so you might know of other education websites that have courses. Um, and we have four types of courses. So we have courses for developers, um, courses about introduction to WordPress, so that's for, um, using WordPress. We have courses using the site editor, and then courses about contributing to WordPress. So, if you want to contribute to WordPress, then these courses are for you as well. You'll look down here, 
Um, let's see, we, well, I think we have like 20 courses or something at the moment. So for example, if you click on open source basis, there's a bit of an overview and then um, you can click into the different lessons of those courses here. Um, so yeah, courses are mostly text-based, but they also use images, videos. Um, some courses have quizzes, so you can test yourself and your understanding. And you'll see here, this says seven of seven lessons completed, 100%. And then the Learn WordPress website records your course progress. So if you start a course and you have to step away for a while, um, it'll record your progress and you can come back at a later day and start again from where you left off. Um, so we've done tutorials, workshops, courses, and finally, lesson plans. Um, now, lesson plans, these are aimed at teachers of WordPress. So the first three types of content are aimed at learners of WordPress. And lesson plans are aimed at teachers. So lesson plans are um, resources a teacher can pick up and then go and teach a lesson about WordPress. Um, so for example, for example, submitting block patterns to the directory. So if you click on that, again, lesson plans are aimed at teachers, not learners. So when a teacher takes this, they can see, okay, this is a 45 minute lesson plan. Uh, for beginning intermediate users. Instruction type is demonstration, show and tell. So it's, this will be showing people how to um, submit block patterns to the directory. There's a description that gives an overview of the lesson. Um, objectives, what we want people to learn from this lesson. Prerequisite skills, um, skills people need before they start attending the lesson. Um, readiness questions. Materials needed. This is all helping the, the teacher know how to prepare for the lesson. And if you come here, we finally get to notes for the presenter, lesson outline, and then exercise and assessment. So, um, so we have here like different exercise questions, different assessment questions the teacher can use. And finally, if you come down to example lesson, we'll actually have the text here a teacher can read. Um, and different slides or images they can share with their class when they're teaching about this particular concept. Um, so just to refresh again, those are the four types of content on them. We have tutorials, online workshops, courses, and lesson plans. Now today's topic is how to translate content for the Learn WordPress website. And to do that, um, the most important information is the training team handbook. So I'm going to drop this link in the Zoom chat. So at the moment on my screen, you'll see I have the training team handbook open. And um, so um, bookmark this link I've just dropped in the Zoom chat or um, you can access it directly from make.wordpress.org slash training slash handbook. Now, if you open it on the computer, you'll see we have a table of contents on the side. Here. So you have about, getting started, how-to guides, um, et cetera, et cetera. And what we're really interested in today is um, how to translate. So if you open the how-to guides under how-to, you'll have content localization. So we've come to the training team handbook. We've clicked on how to guides. And under that, we have content localization. So this is the main page to help you get started with translating content um, for Learn WordPress. And we're going to details in a bit more. So um, content localization. I like to look at these sub pages. So we have content localization and then we have translating content, creating new content in languages other than English, reviewing translations, translating subtitles, um, et cetera. So we have a few more detailed pages here. Translating content. How do you translate content? Um, and this URL is, um, very long. 
Um, so I will paste the link again in the Zoom chat here. But hopefully you can find how to get there. You go to the training team website, you go to handbook, you go to how to guides, you go to localization. Um, and here we list how to translate the four different types of content. So we mentioned before we have lesson plans, we have tutorials, we have online workshops, and we have courses. And this handbook page here gives you details about how to translate each of these pieces of content. Um, so um, just quickly, if, for example, if you look at lesson plans, you'll see it's a six step process. So first of all is choose an existing lesson plan. Next is create a new GitHub issue, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to walk through one of these processes but there's a, another document I wanted to share before we start. And if, um, if you look at the left here under the index, under content localization, just this last week, we've published a new page and it's called high priority content to translate. So if you go to the Learn WordPress website, you can translate any tutorial or any lesson plan. So if there's a particular tutorial, that your community really needs, you're free to just choose that and translate that. Or if there's a particular course you want to translate, um, you can just pick that up and translate it. And so this handbook page will show, will walk you through how to translate. So um, if there's a particular lesson plan you want to translate, you can click that directly here. But if you want to translate and there's nothing really that you, like you don't really know what to translate from, then we have a high priority content to translate document here, uh, which lists just a handful of high priority content we we're wanting to get translated first. Um, so if you're stuck and not sure what to translate, um, then this high priority document is the best place to start. And today I'm going to take, for example, uh, we'll go with this one here for beginners tutorials. Um, and then we have down here, getting to know the WordPress dashboard. So I'm going to click on that. And this will open up the getting to know the WordPress dashboard tutorial. So I'm going to spend the next half an hour or so walking through how to translate this tutorial. So I have, I've chosen a piece of content and we'll come back to this doc and we'll walk through the steps on the translating content and I'll show you the steps of how you can translate a tutorial. But I wanted to pause there. Some people joined in a bit later. Um, I wanted to see if anybody has any questions in that before we actually get into the translation part. Um, if you have a question, feel free to unmute or you can drop um, your question in the Zoom chat. No questions? All good? That's, that's fine with me. All right, so let's, let's start translating this tutorial. So getting to know the WordPress dashboard, um, just so you can follow along, I'll drop the link in the Zoom chat. Um, so this is the tutorial we're gonna translate. And we're going to follow the steps on this page, the translating content. Now, um, there's a bit of the information at the top here, which I highly recommend you read before you get started. Um, it says here, if you are new to translating resources for WordPress, then we recommend you first read through the general expectations for translators. So just to clarify, this is if you're new to translation in any of WordPress. So if you have experience, translating in the polyglots team, um, then you can skip this because it's the same information that's shared with the polyglots. Um, but um, just um, so just mentioning here, we do have a document, general expectations for translators. For example, don't include random links. Um, don't translate literally, translate organically so that people can read your translation, and understand better. Try to keep the same level of formality. 
don't use slang, learn from other localizations in your language, et cetera. So there's some guidelines there we'd like um, training team translators to read before they get started. All right, once you have familiar, familiarized yourself with those expectations, then you can follow the steps below to translate each content type. And then we have two tips here. The first one, the translation consistency tool is a great tool for translators to book by. If you come across a word or phrase you're not sure how to translate, then you can search for it in that tool to see how other people have translated it in the past. So I'm gonna open this translation consistency tool. And again, this is a tool polyglots use. So if you have a translation experience in the polyglots team, um, this isn't new, um, but this is a really good tool. So what you can do is you enter the original sentence here. For example, um, let's say block editor. So just pretend I don't know how to translate block editor. Um, I can then choose uh, the language. So for example, um, I translate into Japanese, so I can look up Japanese. And I'll just leave that old project. And if I click analyze, then what this tool does is it looks at all the other themes and plugins um, and translations in the WordPress project and tells me how other people have translated block editor into Japanese. Um, and then you'll see all originals have the same translations. So they all translated Baroque Editor. Um, sometimes there might be two or three translations of a word. And if that's the case, this, this will say here, there are two translations for this word, or there are three translations for this word. And then you can pick um, one of the translations that have been used before. Um, you don't have to use this for every single word, but if you ever get stuck with a word or a phrase, um, then this translation consistency tool is a great tool to use um, to help you get over that block. Um, and then finally, we have a note here. If you're looking for something to translate but are not sure what to start on, then check out high priority content, content to translate for ideas. So that's where we got this tutorial. And then we'll jump down to tutorials. So first I have lesson plans here, but we'll come down to tutorials. Now tutorials, for tutorials, you can either re-record the tutorial in your own language or just translate the subtitles and other text shown on the tutorial page. So a tutorial is a short video, five to 10 minute video. If you want, you can re-record the audio on the tutorial. Um, you can even like recreate the slides and do the whole presentation in your own language. Um, and if you're interested in doing that, we have steps here that walk you through it. But re creating a five to 10 minute video takes a lot of effort. Um, so what I recommend is to just translate the subtitles to um, translate the subtitles of the tutorial first. And then if you find your community has a really big need for the tutorial video, um, then you can remake the video then. Um, but as you get started, translating the subtitles is the best way to go. So tutorial, add subtitles to the English video. This is what we're going to work on. Step one, choose an existing tutorial that you'd like to translate. And we've already chosen that. So we can move on to step two. Step two, open a new GitHub issue using the content translation template. Um, creating a GitHub issue at the beginning of the process allows the team to track localized content currently being created and offer any support you need throughout the process. So the training team, we use GitHub to manage translations. Um, so what I would do is I would click on new GitHub issue. And then it says using the content translation template. So if you look here, the training team, we have lots of different templates we use for different tasks. Um, but the important thing here is to use content translation template. So if you look down the side, you'll see we have content translation template. So then we click get started. All right. Now, let's come back over here. 
Um, so open a new Git issue. Okay. And so then we have to fill out this issue. So um, if you're new to GitHub, this might look a bit overwhelming. So I'll try and make it um, as simple as possible. What we have to look at is the title of the GitHub issue here and the content or the details of the issue, which is here. These are the only two places we need to edit. So first of all, the title, it says language translation for content type, content title. So for in my case, I'm going to translate into Japanese. So I'll change this into Japanese. Oops. So Japanese translation for content type. So content type, in this case, I'm translating a tutorial. So I would type tutorial and then content title. So the content title is getting to know the WordPress dashboard. So I'll copy that and I will paste that over here. So now the title is Japanese translation for tutorial, getting to know the WordPress dashboard. Okay. Um, and then it says here, the steps to translate content on Learn WordPress can be found in the handbook. Uh, so that takes us back to this page here. Remember to update the title of the issue, um, which I've just done. So example, it gives an example there, but we've just done that. So we've updated the title. So now we come to the details. So it says here, link to original content. So the link is this link over here. So we get that link, we copy that, we paste that into GitHub issue. I might just make my screen a little larger so it's easier for people to see. Um, so details linked to original content, we did that. Link to original content GitHub issue. Now this one, um, we can skip if we need, um, but what, what we do, um, what it is is we want to track the original content. We want to track all the issues in GitHub and we want to make sure they're connected. We might need to make this optional because this is a bit difficult. You need to understand GitHub a bit. Um, but what we, what we can do is in GitHub, I've just opened the new tab here and we can search for issues with a particular title. Oops. So getting to know the WordPress dashboard. Let me just copy this again. If I search for issues with the title, getting to know the WordPress dashboard, here we go. Getting to know the WordPress dashboard. So this was the original issue that was used when they created the workshop. And you'll see, if you come down here, here is the link to the video for feedback, please review by this date. Um, so what we want to do is we want to copy this link, come back to the issue and paste the link to the original content here. All right, next. Uh, and if that process looks a bit difficult, then you can leave a blank and the translation coordinator will come through and update that link for you. So if you're able to add the link, that's very good. Um, if that's a bit difficult, then feel free to skip that. Next, language you'll be translating to. So in my case, I'll be translating to Japanese. Have you arranged for someone to review this translation? So. For every piece of content on Learn, we like to have it reviewed before it goes published. Um, this is the same for English content and for translated content. And that's just to make sure that um, we keep ourselves accountable to high quality um, content on Learn. So if you already have someone you've set, um, you've arranged as a reviewer, um, you can say yes. Uh, but if you don't have anybody arranged yet to review your content, you can say no. And the translation coordinator will help find a translation reviewer for you. Um, so for example, if you already have found someone, then the next question is the review is GitHub username. 
Um, so you could um, add their username here. For example, Destiny is another training team representative. So if I had her arranged, I can add her name like this. Um, but if I didn't have anybody arranged, I would leave that blank and I would just write no. Okay. And then finally, other information. So if there's any other notes you wanted to add, um, you can add that here. But again, this can be blank. Okay, next step. Once translated, please link or upload your translated files in a comment on this issue and request a translation review. So just to refresh what I did right now was I updated the GitHub title and then I filled out information here under details. And then I would click submit new issue. All right, so I've just created a new GitHub issue. The title is Japanese translation for tutorial, getting to know the WordPress dashboard. Um, you'll see the different details listed here. And the next step is once translated, please link or upload your translated files in a comment on this issue and request a translation review. Um, so I've completed step two on this guide and I can now move on to step three. Before I do, with any questions so far or something people want me to explain a bit better? No? All right, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to drop them in the Zoom chat. Let's move on to step three. All right. Oh, here we go. Pia Mario. Hello, Ben. So far, it seems pretty similar to the process we followed for other content types. Great. It's supposed to be similar. Um, so that's good. Um, all the content so far is the same. You choose a piece of content, you create a GitHub issue. Now, this is where it becomes um, specific for each content type. So for tutorial subtitles, it says in the application of your choice, translate the text shown on a tutorial page under the video, such as learning outcomes, comprehension questions, and transcript. So if you open a, um, oops, we can close this one now. If you open the content under tutorials, under the video, you'll see there's some information here. So we have an overview, learning outcomes, comprehension questions. Sometimes there are resources and then a transcript. So what you want to do is you want to translate this in the application of your choice. Um, I like to use Google Docs um, because the next step, we're going to be receiving reviews about this content. Um, and a Google Doc has a comment feature so people can leave comments on specific parts of your translation. Um, but it doesn't have to be Google Docs. It can just be any other um, application. And that's where you would um, translate this content. Um, so what we'll do is I'll copy all this content. Copy. And then I'm going to create a new Google Doc. There we go. And I'm going to paste. I'm going to do that. All right. Um, that's probably this. Okay. So that's pasted there. And I'm going to, I'm going to start translating this. So let's see um, Japanese translation for tutorial dashboard overview. And then I'm not going to translate all of this right now, but for example, um, this English here would be, let's see, on the work short video one. Maybe the is not dashboard. Oh, show price must. Um, word is demo, copy, oh, as in the other. Yeah, 
提供します。All right?、Um, and you'll notice I've left the English here in the Google Doc.、Um, this helps the reviewer when they come along after me, when they check my translation against the review.、Um, if you have the English there, it helps them sort of compare and make sure it's all right.、Um, you can get rid of the English and they can compare with the original over here. Uh, but me personally, I think leaving the original English there helps reviewers. Okay, so let's pretend I've completed the translation. So,、um, number three was in the application of your choice, translate the text shown.、Um, we've done that. So, number four, update the GitHub issue with links to your translated resources and request a translation review. So, what we would do is we would copy the link. To this Google Doc and add it to this GitHub issue over here. So,、um, with Google Docs, I would click share and I would copy the link.、Um, but when you do this, make sure people have access.、Um, sometimes Google Docs can be private and people can't see the contents.、Um, so, anyone with the link can comment. Anyone with the link can comment. Make sure your access is all good. Copy the link. Once you've copied that, you would come over to the GitHub issue and you would say, This translation is ready for a review. And then paste the link to your translation and comment. Okay. Now,、um, if you're using Google Docs, you can share the link like this. Um, if you've translated this into, say, a text file, then you can upload the text file、um, to, your Google, uh, to your GitHub comment here.、Um, so I think, let's, I think you just need to drag and drop the file into this box.、Um, so you can say, well,、um, oh, yeah, so you can say, like, translation. Is ready for a review and then drag and drop the file from your computer like this. And then you'll take a moment to upload. I'm just dragging and dropping a random file here, but、um, it'll look something like that.、Um, but you can then comment and then your file will be uploaded for other people to look at. So either works, you can share a link or you can share the actual file. Um, now, once you get to this stage, we want you、um, to notify a translation coordinator that your translation is ready for review. So, if you've arranged for a translation from someone, then you can just ping them and let them know, and they can translate or they can review for you.、Um, but if you haven't arranged for someone, then Ping a translation coordinator、um, in Slack, and then they can arrange for someone to trans,、uh, review this for you. So, what you would do is I'm going to bring my Slack screen onto the screen here. Just a moment. All right. So, in the WordPress Slack, I'm looking at the training team. Channel at the moment. And what you could do is type something like、um, we have translation coordinators. So we have a special call word for translation coordinators.、Um, translation. So you'll see I started with an at mark and then type translation. And then at the top here, we have training faculty translation coordinators. If you use this, Then you can ping all the translation coordinators at once. And then whoever's logged in、um, will get that ping and be able to respond to you. Um, faculty translation coordinators. And then you'll type something like、um, Hi, everyone.、Um, this translation is ready for a review. And then you can copy. And paste the link to the GitHub issue. And then the translation coordinator can look at that and assign a translation、uh, 
review up um, for you. So I'm about, let me just type. This is a test, all right. So translation coordinates. Hi everyone, this translation is ready for a review. And I do that. And then um, we can keep this preview open or we can close it. Um, but then all the faculty translation coordinates will get notified and someone will respond to your ping for you. So let's see, we came to step four, update the GitHub issue with links to your translated resource and request the translation review. So we've updated the GitHub issue with this. We've made a request for a translation review in uh, Slack. And then, so the translation reviewer will come along and review your translation and they might leave comments in the Google Doc or they might leave comments in the GitHub issue. Um, but wait for them to review your content. And um, if they make any suggestions, then see if it's valid, apply those suggestions to your content and prepare it to publish. Okay, next five. Once reviewed, request a translation coordinator to create a new post on Learn WordPress for the content. Then copy and paste the translated content into that new post. So at the moment, the translation just lives in a Google Doc, but we want to put this on Learn WordPress. And so a translation coordinator has to prepare a new post for you. Um, so um, the translation coordinator will prepare a new post and they will comment in the GitHub issue here and say, um, oh, let, let, me, let, me, let me create a new post. So um, this is what, this, what I'm about to show now is what the translation coordinator will do. So a normal translator doesn't see this part. But the translation coordinator, they would go into Learn WordPress and they would um, they would create a new post for you by first of all finding the English post. They will um, copy that. And so they would do this. They would change the language to Japanese. Down. Save draft. All right, so they'll say something like, please copy paste your translation into this post. Okay, so a translation coordinator will prepare a post for you um, for you to copy and paste your translation into. So what you would do is you would click on this link the translation coordinator gives you, you click on that. And initially it will all be English because we're starting from English. So what you would do is you would take the translation you made in this Google Doc, you would copy that, and you would come over here and replace the English, oops, oops. You would replace the English with the translation. So right now I just, I've only translated this first um, paragraph, but you would go through and replace all this content with your translation from the Google Doc. And once you've done that, um, don't publish yet, click save draft. All right, so we'll click Save Draft. So that was step five. Once reviewed, request the translated coordinator to create a new post on Learn WordPress for the content and copy and paste the translated content into that new post, all right? Um, if you're doing like a lesson plan, then that's it. Uh, but for tutorials, we still have to get the subtitles onto the video itself. So step six, follow translating subtitles 
to download an English subtitle file, transfer the translated transcript into this file and upload it back to WordPress TV. So, um, before, before we dive into that, let me, let me translate the first section of the transcript so we have something to work with. Um, so the first section here says, um, all right, so what I've just done is I've just translated the first two sentences here into Japanese. All right. So then we'll follow the steps um, here. Step six, follow translating subtitles, download an English subtitle file, transfer the translated transcript into the file and upload it back to WordPress TV. So let's open this up. Um, so there's a bit of information here about um, translating subtitles. I'll skip over that for now and show you these steps. So first, find the video you want to translate subtitles for on WordPress TV. You can use the search bar on WordPress TV to search for the video title. So what we need to do is we need to go to WordPress TV. And once again, what we're, what we're searching for is this video. So getting to know the WordPress dashboard. So here, I like to use the parentheses um, symbol here. Getting to know the WordPress dashboard. Okay, and then you'll find um, the top one is probably what we're looking for. Getting to know the WordPress dashboard. So all our tutorial videos also live on WordPress.tv. All right, so we found the video, which is step one. So now we come down here. Once you've opened the video, search for subtitles in the menu bar on the right underneath the video. If it, if it has been subtitled already, you should see TTML English. So we come over here, if you scroll down in the sidebar, you'll see we have subtitles. And here it has all the languages it has subtitles for at the moment. So we have English, we have, oh, I think that's Gujarati, maybe. And then we also have French. Um, but anyway, so we want to click on English. And when you click on English, you'll see a pop-up just opened up. Um, this downloads the subtitle file to your computer. So we've just downloaded the English subtitles to our computer. All right, step three, uh, click on the word English to download the English subtitle file. Okay, we've done that. So next, format the subtitle file. So once downloaded, open the subtitle file in your text editor. Oftentimes the file will look like this. All right, so I am going to open the subtitle file in my text editor. Um, if you're not sure what a text editor is, at the very top of the page, we have here, um, in order to translate subtitle files, you'll need a text editor. And we have some different options of text editors you can use. Um, so any text editor will work fine. Um, so what we'll do, oops, I've just opened my um, text editor and I will open the file we just downloaded. Okay, this is the subtitle file and that looks difficult to read. So it's recommended that you format the file first so that it is easier to translate the subtitles. Um, search online for a free XML code formatter. So for example, we'll use this. And what this software does is you can copy all of this text into the left. Um, and then you'll see, oops, beautify. If you click on beautify, it has um, put indents and things in the right. So when you copy this and take it back, oops, if you copy this and take it back to this document, it's a bit easier to read. You can see each line now starts with P, um, 
and it's all indented a bit, making it a bit easier to read. So step two, use the tools to format the subtitle file. Um, you can download the formatted file as a new file or copy and paste the formatted text back into your editor. So formatted file should now look like this. So we've done that. Next, um, translate the subtitles. You will notice the majority of subtitle files look like this. So they start with a P and end with a P. Um, the text that appears between the two P brackets is the text you'll want to translate. You'll want to leave the rest of the file as is. So for example, here's a sample um, subtitle file, and then it gives an, you'll see we have a P, P bracket here, and then it finishes with a P bracket there. And then the English subtitles are in the middle here between the brackets. And we want to translate that into Japanese. So let's open this file over here. So skip the first few lines. You'll see down here, we have a P bracket and it says, welcome to learn WordPress. Join us as we get more acquainted with the, and then dashboard comes over here. So what we want to do is we want to replace this English with the translation we've, that's already been approved over here. So the transcript was the translation of the video. And so all the text you see here, welcome to the Learn WordPress. Join us as we get more acquainted with the dashboard. That text appears here in the um, subtitle file. So I copy the Japanese translation, come over here and I replace the English with the Japanese. And you'll notice the word dashboard came over here into the new P bracket. If it's just one word or two, um, you can move that like, at the moment, the Japanese word for dashboard appears here. It's not at the end of the sentence like English is. So I've just included dashboard in the top P bracket here. Um, and you can make minor adjustments like that. Um, but sometimes if it's a long sentence, then you'll want to split the sentence in two so that the length of the translation between P brackets is pretty much the same as the original. I hope that makes sense. All right. Um, so then you'll just go through the whole file here and do the same. Um, so you'll see there's other information here inside the P bracket. You can just leave that as is. Um, all we want to trend, all we want to change is the text between the two P brackets. All right. Then let's see, let's come back over here. Um, once you have translated the file, save the file as a new .ttml file. Um, so we'll file save as. And we'll call this Japanese test.ttml. Okay. So save the TTML file. Then we can finally upload the translated file to WordPress.tv. So open the page you originally downloaded subtitles from. From the subtitles section in the right menu bar, click on subtitle this video. So we'll go back to um, WordPress.tv. WordPress TV, getting to know the WordPress dashboard. On the right, under subtitles, you'll see there was a link subtitle this video. So we're going to upload a new subtitle file. So click on this. And then, well, you saw it automatically filled in my email address, but um, there's a bit of information here. So what's your WordPress.org username, what's your email address, language? We want to change this to Japanese and then subtitle file. So choose your file. So you can open that um, Japanese test TTML and then click on submit. Oops, I had to enter, enter my email address. Oh well, I will delete that for the recording. But anyway, open, submit. Okay. So I've just submitted a new translation of the subtitle file to WordPress TV. Now, before that shows up 
on the video, it has to be approved. Um, so on the following page, fill out your WordPress log username and email address. We did all that. Um, number three, uploaded subtitle files must be approved by a site admin on WordPress.tv before they show up on the video. Feel, feel free to ping a faculty admin in the training Slack channel, asking them to approve your translation file. Um, I will update this later because now we have translation coordinators. You can ping them again in Slack like we did before, or um, the translation coordinator should be following your GitHub issue now. So you can even leave a comment on GitHub and say, um, hi, I've uploaded the subtitle file. Um, please approve this. Thanks. And then the translation coordinator will see that so they can log into WordPress.tv and approve your subtitle files for you. Um, and that, that was the end of that step. So number six was translating subtitles. Um, number seven was once done, notify a translation coordinator to approve the subtitles. So a translation coordinator, they will approve the subtitles for you. And then they will also check this post. So remember before we were copying and pasting our translation into the post on Learn WordPress, the translation coordinator will check this for you, make sure it all looks good. Um, a translation coordinator will also look at the settings on the right here, make sure they're all correct. And then a translation coordinator will click publish for you. And then it will say, they'll let you know in the GitHub issue. They'll say, I've approved your subtitles. I've published the content for you. Um, and the content has been published on Learn. And that takes us to the very end of translating subtitles on a tutorial. What I realized while I was saying all that is that this process takes a bit of time. Um, once you get used to it, um, like, like anything, once you get used to it, it's not as overwhelming. Um, so I guess something I want to leave everyone with is translation co uh, coordinators are happy to answer your questions in Slack at any time. Um, if nobody is online right now, they'll see your ping and get back to you later. But if you ever get stuck um, translating content or if you ever need help with GitHub or maybe, maybe you just need help to get something published, um, feel free to ping faculty translation coordinators in Slack and they will be happy to answer your questions for you. So I'll just leave this at this um, Slack notification in the Zoom chat here. So you'll see I just copy pasted at faculty hyphen translation coordinators, ping these people anytime in the training channel, and they will be happy to answer your translation questions for you. All right. So I'm coming to the end of the content I have prepared for this online workshop. Are there any questions people have or anything you want me to show again? Pierre Marielle, no real questions. We just need a bit of practice. I think that's it. Um, and what I plan on doing is um, this recording is going to be posted on wordpress.tv, um, but I plan on cutting it into small sections um, and somehow putting those small sections into the handbook. So like just a 30 second clip about creating a GitHub issue or a 30 second clip about translating subtitles. So if you, when you come back later, you can just click um, that video and get a quick overview of how to do those specific processes. Um, hopefully that will help people um, as they get used to the training team's process. Louis say, yes, I indeed need to test the process. Here, Mario, I was personally considering that for shorter videos, it would be probably faster creating a new video in our language. The other advantage would be showing the localized interface to those following the tutorial. I agree. 
Um, for tutorials, if you can record the re-record the tutorial in your language, that would be um, really good. And um, something I something we did before. So with this GitHub issue, <clears throat> I went into GitHub and looked for the original content. Um, and what you can do um, is some. What you can do. Uh, let's see. So if you scroll down here, da, 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 you'll see this person created the original video. Um, if this person is still active in Slack, you could reach out in Slack and ask them to share their slides with you. So like if they used English slides, sometimes just getting the English slides helps you and you can then translate the slides um, on your computer and re-record the video with those exact same slides. Um, and sometimes you can just retake the screenshots of that. Um, so that's one good, um, benefit of finding the original GitHub issue. You can figure out who the original presenter was. Well, actually, if you scroll down to the bottom here, so I'm looking at the Learn WordPress tutorial. If you scroll down to the bottom, the presenter information is right here. So you could reach out to this person in Slack and say, hey, I want to translate your slides to create a localized version. Can you share your slides with me? Um, and that might work. Um, it depends what software they use. Some people don't use slides. They use like demonstrations and things. So it depends on the video, but that could also be something you can do. All right, and Margarita, maybe starting translations from lesson plan to test the process is more easier than translating a tutorial, I think. That is true. Translating a lesson plan um, is probably a bit easier because you don't have the, the subtitle process. Um, that is true. So the reason why we did a tutorial today is because at the moment, the training team's high priority content. We have a list of high priority content to translate uh, tutorials and courses. So that's why I did a demonstration about tutorial. But what you say is true. Lesson plans are easier to translate. So even just getting used to GitHub and getting reviews and everything, um, lesson plans could be a good place to start. All right. Any final questions people want to ask? Martin, it will require a lot of review of this video before it will all become clear. Yes. Um, and so once again, if you have questions, like once this video is published, I will post the recording link in the meetup.com event. Um, so you'll get notified about the recording. And while you're watching it, if you have questions, um, you can even ping me in Slack too. Um, you, can, um, you can even use this faculty translation coordinators and say, I'm, like, I'm watching the video and at like 35 minutes in that you do this specific thing and I need you to help me understand this better. Um, and then we can look at the video, 35 minutes. Oh, okay, that's what we were doing and then help you with that. So please ask questions. Um, the training team for like 10 years has only mainly created English content. So translation is a whole new thing for us. So that's why it's a bit still rough around the edges. The process is a bit rough because it's a new process, um, but we are open to feedback. Uh, so let us know where you get stuck, what's difficult, what's easy. Um, and we hope to improve the process from here on. Um, Pia Mario, yep, I noticed that several of the high priority content are video tutorials. All right. Um, so we so we went over for about fifty minutes, but thank you everyone who stayed um, and watched to the very end. Once again, we're open to feedback. Please let us know how the process is as you experience it, and I will let you all know once the recording has been processed and uploaded to WordPress.tv. All right. Thank you everyone for joining today, and I look forward to seeing you all again in an online workshop soon. Okay then. Thank you, everyone. Great, Ben. Thank you, Samit. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.